How's it going my bakers? Hope you're doing really well. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you to make a no-need version of my softest burger buns ever. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. One of the most popular recipes on my channel is of my super soft burger buns. But of course that video was made back in the day when we used to knead our dough. And I'm on a mission of converting all the old favorites to the no-need method. Because kneading bread dough is unnecessary when you're making small batches at home. I do however appreciate that there are people who love the kneading process. And if you're one of them, head over to the other video. But whichever method you use, the result here is pretty much the same. An extremely soft and light burger bun, thanks to the scalding method. The one in this video is cold fermented. But if you don't want to cold ferment it, if you want to make them on the same day, simply leave them to ferment at room temperature for a couple of hours. And yes, I've thrown in a quick and dirty burger recipe in here too. So let me show you how to make these bad boys and let's see what exactly we need. Starting with the dough, we'll move on to the burger ingredients later in the video, after we make the buns. We'll need some white bread flour, yeast, salt, sugar, butter, an egg yolk, some boiling water, we'll use the remaining egg white for glazing and we'll need some sesame seeds for sprinkling on top. When it comes to the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, bowl, scales, a dough scraper, temperature probe, a brush and a whisk will come in handy, but it's not totally necessary. Okay, let's start the process and the first step is to make the scald. In a large bowl, combine the flour, sugar, salt, butter and boiling water. Give it all a good mix, cover it up and leave it to cool down completely. Because I used all the water of the recipe, my scald took around 3 hours to cool down. If you don't want to wait that long, reduce the amount of boiling water in the scald by half Leave it to sit for an hour or so and then use the other half of the water for adjusting the temperature. I still prefer my method because I don't mind waiting. It's funny I say that because I did get a little bit impatient waiting for this to cool down. You want the scald to cool down to around the same temperature as the desired final dough temperature which is around 25 degrees celsius or 77 degrees fahrenheit. My one was just a little bit warmer. Ok to continue the process add the egg yolk and the yeast to the scald, give it all a good mix, finally add the bread flour and then mix again. Dough will be quite sticky and messy, but that's normal. And that is exactly why we don't want to knead this. You can see me handling it here with wet hands, which is always the best way of handling a sticky dough. Checking the temperature, of course, I've gone a little bit higher than I was aiming for, but since we're cold fermenting, there's a quick fix that we can do. Simply shorten the folding interval. I'm going to refrigerate the dough for only 15 minutes before giving it the first fold. If your dough is around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit, then you can leave it in there for half an hour. Folding it sooner makes it cool down sooner, as we are taking the cool down outside part and folding it into the middle, distributing the temperature evenly throughout the dough. And of course if you're a little bit new to bread making, and you don't know what scalding is, and what the other purposes of folding are, and why am I putting the dough in the fridge right now, and what's temperature control. I have made detailed videos about all these topics and many more which you can find in the principles of baking playlist. Ok first fold done, place the dough back into the bowl, cover it up, place it back into the fridge, leave it to cool down again, Take it out a little while later and perform the second fold, which works exactly the same way as the first one. Dust the dough with flour, place it out on the table, fold the edge over the middle, you know the drill. And when I check the temperature after the second fold, you can see what I mean by the dough cooling down quickly. Ok, after the second fold the dough goes back into the fridge for a long cold ferment. And you can leave it in there for as little as 12 hours, I fermented mine for 24 hours. Remember, the longer you ferment it, the better it will taste. But of course the main thing here is the texture. It is what you fill your buns with that will bring most of the flavor. If you are fermenting your dough at room temperature, it will take around a couple of hours. Make sure it doubles in size before you divide it. And you should always weigh your dough before you divide it to get consistent pieces. As you can see after dividing the dough is quite irregular. Some of it is made up of little pieces. So before we can do the final shaping, we need to do pre-shape. The pre-shape works exactly the same as the fold, just don't make it very tight. The aim here is to get a more uniform shape. After pre-shaping, we need to let this dough rest for 20 minutes. It is quite moist and sticky, so there's no need to cover it. It will not dry out, unless there's wind blowing in your kitchen. After the resting stage, it is time for the final shaping. Now you can see me using just a little bit of flour throughout the video. This dough is a little bit sticky, but don't add too much. It's always easier to add more than to take off. The final shaping works pretty much the same as the folding step and the pre-shaping step. Place the dough ball on the table with the smooth side down, flatten it out, Fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table. Finally you can pick it up and pinch the seam together at the bottom. Place the dough balls on a non-stick paper covered tray. Make sure there's plenty of space between them. Cover them up and leave them to final proof for around 2 hours. During the final hour of fermentation preheat the oven. 160 degrees celsius fan on and that's 320 fahrenheit. And just for reference, my kitchen was around 23 degrees celsius or 73 degrees fahrenheit. If yours is cooler, you might need to ferment your dough balls for longer. 
you want them to at least double in size. And when you shake the tray, they should have a nice wobble to them. Wobbly balls are ready balls. Okay, there's just a couple things we need to do before baking. Brush them with the egg white and sprinkle them with sesame seeds, generously. One more thing I like to do is patting the seeds down using the palm of my hand to really make them stick. Okay, these bad boys are ready for the oven and they will take around 25 minutes to bake. I am baking on the lower shelf of the oven and my oven does not have a heating element at the bottom, so you may have to adjust your baking time. And if they are browning a little bit unevenly, about halfway through the bake or towards the end of the bake, take the tray out, turn it around and put it back into the oven. Bake your burger buns until they are nicely golden brown all over. And there you go, that's how you make super soft burger buns using the no need method. Very simple, very easy and the result is great. Now if you want to make some burgers, keep watching. It is a very simple recipe, we are going to bake these in the oven too. We got some ground beef, garlic, salt, pepper, fresh thyme leaves, Worcestershire sauce and some stale bread. Any kind of stale bread. This is what's going to make them nice and soft. It's an old grandma trick that works really well. First things first, we need to soak the old bread. Simply pour some water over it, leave it to sit there for a couple of seconds and then squeeze out as much of the water as you can and crumble up the bread. Place it in a large bowl and add the other ingredients, the salt, the pepper, the garlic, the onions, the fresh thyme, the Worcestershire sauce and then give it all a good mix. Then add the ground beef and mix until everything is nice and smooth. You can certainly use this mix to make some meatballs too and you could use the tomato sauce from my 48 hour cold fermented pizza video and make yourself some spaghetti with meatballs and tomato sauce. I guess I'm just telling you this because sometimes you can use the same recipes to create completely different things. Once your mix is done, divide it into four equal pieces, then shape those pieces into balls, make sure they are nice and tight. Once you've done that, only then shape them into patties. This will make them keep their shape and make them nice and flat. You want them to be wider than you think they should be because they will shrink as they bake and you don't want them ending up smaller than your burger buns. Okay, place them on a baking tray with some nonstick paper and then cook them under the broiler right next to the heating element for 10 minutes at 250 degrees Celsius or 480 degrees Fahrenheit. Take the burgers out, top them with a piece of cheese, pop them back into the oven for one more minute. And remember, you should always toast your buns. Cut them in half, brush them with some butter and then cook them in a pan on high heat for one minute. Add your favorite sauce to both sides, top the bottom bun with a burger and anything else that you like. I always go with the classics. Pickles, tomatoes and onions. It's very simple, but it works for me. You can of course fill these burgers with a million different things. Or you can just make delicious sandwiches using these buns. But I do love a big fat burger once in a while. To be honest, I only ever eat them when I film a video about burger buns. And that's only around a couple times a year. And I'm definitely making a count with this one. This burger is an absolute beast. And it's only a quarter pounder. I can barely fit this thing in my mouth. I had to squish it down before I bit into it. And speaking of squishing, just look at the texture of these buns. That's next level softness right there. So what do you think of this recipe? Do you like the no need method? Do let me know down in the comments. You want to see more videos like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel. Click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.